Hey everyone, I'm Brian Henk, and I'm doing another strategic analysis of a tabletop game. The game today is Seven Wonders, and it's by Antoine Bauza. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Antoine. Uh, so this game is um, its an interesting one. It's one that uh, a lot of people have in their collection. It's kind of one of those keystone games. It's a lot of fun once you get the rules down and the symbology of the game down. Um, it's very, very, very frustrating for new players. You throw someone into this game and they are going to be forced to make all these decisions um, every single turn. They're looking through this, uh, this hand to find the card that they should play, but they have no idea what the strategies are, you know, what, which cards are, are better than others. So um, a new player is just going to have to keep making these decisions and having no idea what they're, what they're doing. And so it really sucks for the new player. So definitely the first few turns, the first few ages, um, and the first few games, really, uh, they're going to be a little lost, and so that sucks. So um, definitely give a lot of coaching to new players who play this game, and just uh, you know tell them to do the most simple strategies. So like go with the, the blue cards and um, build a bunch of resources early on, and um, they they won't win the game uh, against veterans, but you know they'll they'll have fun, they'll be involved, and they'll learn the game so that they can uh, compete a little better next time. Uh, so, yeah, Seven Wonders, um, there are pretty much two strategies you can use in this game. Um, one being to base your game on those blue cards, those community cards, and just get as many points as you can with those, those just in big chunks with those cards. Um, or you can go with the science strategy, um, which uh, takes a little more planning, it takes uh, some more micromanagement, and you can either run away with the game with the science strategy, or you can... Um, come in last place very easily too. Um, so it really depends on what other people are doing, which cards they give you, which cards um, you you have uh, in front of you to be able to draw for each uh, each turn and each age. So there's kind of a lot of ifs uh, um, in this strategy, but uh, it, it can really pay off in the end too. So um, those are the big ones. Again, um, if you're watching this video, maybe this is the first one you've seen that I have done. I'm assuming you know all the rules of this game. Uh, if you don't, you probably want to check out more of like a tutorial type video. I'm going to just focus completely on the strategy. So if that's what you're looking for, keep watching. And I'm going to jump right into uh, talk of resources. So basically, when it comes down to it in this game, uh, you will get 18 plays that you're going to get to play. You're going to get to play possibly six cards for each age um, and three ages. Um, some of these plays are going to be used by discarding uh, your cards for three coins. Some of them you're going to put under your board for building stages of your wonder. So you're not going to get all 18. But still, um, the key then, obviously, is to build as few of these non-point-giving cards, like the treasury cards and the resource cards, and build as many of the point-giving ones as possible. But obviously that's not... Uh, it's not possible to only build the point giving ones because the point giving ones require resources. So, um, but yeah, just build the bare bones minimum of the resource and treasury structures possible uh, to build the structures you're going to need in your strategy or the stages in your wonder. So, um, here is a table of the resources that you will get depending on the number of players in the game and um, it shows how many resources you get to. So like the Act 1, uh, Act 2 is often give you two resources for each one. So. Um, this should uh, give you an idea of what you're going to be getting in the game, but you should already know that because um, before watching this video, you should really know how to play this game. Uh, so we're, I'm going to use the, these uh, tables like this for each of the strategies that you can use, and uh, so I'll be referring back to this table and other tables as the video uh, progresses. Um, so also this is the, I'll switch over to the treasury, uh, treasury structures that you'll be able to build. Um, so here's another table of those. Um, so some of them you can uh, you can get some free builds uh, through this one. So like um, in Act 1, uh, if, especially if you're going for the community strategy, the blue strategy, uh, you should try to build a trading post uh, and or a marketplace uh, so that you can get the free build in Act 2. Um, plus those, just it's, it's really nice to have that uh, um, very flexible uh, bunch of resources that you can build, um, especially for that community strategy. Uh, so yeah, that's um, if you. So basically, also um, the the more resources that you build, uh, keep you more flexible, uh, especially in Act One when you're still kind of figuring out which strategy you're going to go for. Um, it also keeps you more consistent because you're not 
uh, relying on uh, certain like prerequisite cards to get you free builds. Um, so yeah, basically the, the more resources you, you have available to you, the more flexible and consistent you will be. But again, every time you play a resource card or a treasury card, those are plays that you're using that are not directly giving you points. So just be careful. Um, so next I'm gonna talk about the community strategy. This uh, strategy is not very complicated. Uh, you're just trying to build a bunch of these blue uh, community structures and build as many as you can and they just give you a bunch of points each time you do. Uh, there's uh, a few of them that have uh, free build, so those are important in this strategy too to get those, uh, those down so that you can play others for free in the future. And um, the, the blue one, it's, um, because it's so straightforward, it's great for a new player. Because, um, like I said, the, uh, the, the entry criteria, the learning that's required in this game to really compete in it, is, um, it's, it's pretty hefty. So if you can just play this one where you're just looking for blue cards um, and throwing them down wherever you can, um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty simple way to play the game. So I would definitely recommend this one for a new player. But it can be really, really good for um, a, a more veteran player, too, because um, you get a lot of points with these blue cards. And it doesn't rely on getting, like, a few specific cards. It doesn't, um, people can't just, like, you know, discard. No one's really going to discard the blue, blue cards, usually, in a game, um, you know, like when they're, they're getting their, their three coins or they're building their wonder stages because it's so, more, so much more critical to discard science cards to throw, throw off that strategy. So a lot of people really work to throw, throw off the science strategy and they don't worry too much about the blue. But yeah, you can really get a bunch of points. And so when you splash in some military to get some military points, um, this is often a strategy that wins too. Um, so here is another table of the community cards, uh, when, when you're gonna get them, the free builds that you get with them, and the point payoff that you get too. Uh, so, um, you can, if you do the calculations on them throughout the game, you get about 4.5 victory points per blue structure that you build uh, throughout, uh, so overall, the entire game, Act 1, 2, and 3, Age 1, 2, and 3. And uh, so you get on average of, an average of 2.5 victory points for Act 1, uh, 4 for Act 2, um, and then uh, 6.5 uh, in the Act 3 structures, blue structures. So that actually you can just use as, as a gauge throughout and throughout the game for any really any of the strategies that you choose. That's about what you should be getting. So you can get above those averages um, for the cards that you play. Um, it's likely you will have a very strong chance at winning. And if you're below, you pretty much won't. Because um, that's what a, a blue player will be, uh, can expect to get for each of the structures. So, um, yeah, it's a really nice little gauge. So you kind of get a feel for, for where you are, how you're doing in the game. So, um, looking at the table, um, you want to probably grab a, um, well, definitely any of the, the three blue structures that you can build in Act 1 um, are great. Um, because they have, they have free builds. Uh, in Act 2, um, the the two structures, the statue and the temple, also have have free builds um, that you can you'll be able to build stuff for free in Act Three. So those are great to grab, especially if you don't have a huge variety of resources at your disposal. Um, and then in in Act Three, um, there there really isn't any particular blue card that you need, but the points that you get for these are are pretty killer. So any of those blue cards you can play at the end are, are pretty pretty amazing, especially if you build them for free. But otherwise in Act 3 you're just trying to scrounge up as many points uh, as you can through military, blue cards, or uh, any like the guilds or, or the, the treasury cards that you might be able to play. So uh, that's really about it for the community strategy. So I'll uh, jump over to the science strategy next. The science strategy can be a lot of fun to play, uh, especially if you like collecting things. Like, um, you play Magic the Gathering and you go for complete sets, like I do. Um, then you'll probably like this, or you know, if you collect stamps or coins, or you went through a Pound Puppy collection phase, or you really like that McDonald's uh, Monopoly game that comes by and you go to McDonald's all the time so you can get your, your Monopoly pieces. So if you're one of those types of people, you will probably really like this strategy. Um, it's, it's risky, though. Um, if it works out perfectly for you, uh, it can you will run away with the game. But if it doesn't, 
you're not going to come close. You'll probably even get last place in the game. So, um, yeah, it is pretty risky. you got to be very careful. I would only recommend this to a veteran to be able to try to pull this off. Um, here's a table of the structures that you can build throughout the game, uh, the science structures. So um, you can see there's a lot of free builds you can get from this. Um, so like if you can if you can make it so that you can build the first three Act One structures, oh that is such an awesome awesome start. Um, so if, yeah, if you can get the apothecary and the scriptorium and the workshop, then you can use those to build most of the Act Two structures. You just need another lumber to build all the Act Two structures. And then once you build the Act Two structures, you can build all of the Act Three structures. Um, but of course, if you don't get one of these, so if like you don't get an act couple of the Act Two structures, it's going to handicap you in Act Three because it's going to be really tough for you to build those Act Three structures, um, unless you've got a bunch of extra resources, which you don't want to do. So the order in which you get these cards, and also your opposing players, who like how many other people are playing the science strategy, is really going to affect how how successful you will be in this one. So yeah, you, if you can like grab those three, um, those those three great resources in the beginning and build all of the Act One structures, um, that's awesome. Such a good start. And then if you can just if you can just get one more lumber and build all of the Act Two structures, then Act Three. Oh man, you are gonna be so set with this. Um, so throughout the game too, if you you're really shooting for three sets of each of the symbols. If you can get three sets of the symbols, you're gonna, uh, it's gonna be uh, pretty killer points. You're gonna probably win. Hopefully, you can maybe grab a fourth of something. Um, but really, you're you're going for sets here um, instead of going for like one particular type. Um, that's good, but you're gonna cash in the most if you get the sets. Um, and plus, it just works out that you usually get sets because of the limited number of each of the symbols in each of the um, each of the ages that you're possibly gonna be able to get. So, um, yeah, again, there is, there is the, the Scientist Guild, too, um, that you can see there. Um, you, it does require two lumber and two ore, uh, so you might want to grab those also uh, early on if you possibly can, uh, just so that if that does come up, it's really hard to rely on a card that might not even be in the deck and somebody else might grab it for you or, like, discard it. So it's, it's tough to really rely too much on that, so I don't worry too much if I don't get those two lumber and two ore with this strategy, but um, it's nice, especially if you can just, like, grab it from a neighbor. Um, but yeah, so if you can work it, you can play very successfully with this strategy with just four resources, one of each gray, and even just access to them. Your neighbors can have them. Um, but yeah, the, the, the three gray resources and the lumber, that is all you absolutely need if things go really well for you. So it's a pretty cool strategy uh, to possibly use. Um, if you get four sets of this, you win. There's really no question. Um, so yeah, that's, so that's about it for the science strategy. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the military cards. A lot of people who play tabletop games uh, really like to like build armies and fight and uh, beat opponents and um, especially, yeah, you probably have a guy in your game group who, who's kind of like that too, he's just aggressive and wants to win all the time. Uh, but that can be really risky in Southern Wonders because um, if you have to, again, you, you want to be really efficient with all of your plays. And if you spend a bunch of your plays on building military structures, those are, um, those are plays that you don't get for your primary strategy, which is going to be the biggest source of your points. Um, if you never play a military structure and you lose every battle with both of your neighbors, you're only going to lose six points, you know, which is not that bad, especially when you consider that you just saved playing any military structures. You can play point-giving structures with those plays. Um, so it's really not bad at all. If you win every battle with your neighbors, it is pretty significant in that it gives you 18 points. 18 points is not going to win you the game, but it will if it's in conjunction with your a, a fairly effective primary strategy. So you want to win as many of these battles as you can, but do not waste cards on these military plays. Unless, so basically, just do it if you have nothing in your hand that you can that actually play for your primary strategy. It's really a really secondary thing. So take a look at this table. Um, you can see that most of the structures that you can, pl that most of the military structures you can you can play with one clay, two lumber, and two ore. Um, you, I mean, if you if you actually do find yourself dominating your opponents, 
Um, the strategist guild that you can possibly get in Act 3 uh, will score you a bunch of points. So um, you might want to grab a loom and a stone so that you can build that if, if it does happen to come up. Um, and if you can, if you can build that, uh, that laboratory, uh, the science card, in Act 2, um, for one papyrus and two clay, um, that'll allow you to build the siege workshop uh, in Act 3 for free instead of, instead of um, getting those three clay, um, which, would, which are required to build it. So, um, but even better, build that workshop, the science card in Act 1, then you can build the laboratory for free in Act 2, and the siege workshop for free in Act 3. So uh, sometimes the military, um, the military strategies work, work fairly well in conjunction, really with either, with either the green or the blue, the community or the science um, the strategies. It really works well with either, but um, yeah. Uh, so that's about it uh, for military. I mean, I guess really if you can even just start the game by telling your neighbors like, hey guys, let's do a truce, let's just not, build military structures, um, we'll each won't win, we won't lose points in each age um, for the, the battle points, but, but we'll be able to just focus on our, our primary strategy and not worry about fighting. So let's just do that. And um, a lot of times you can get people to agree to something like that. I mean, obviously it's um, not worth a whole lot in a game like this, but, um, and, and plus you'll, you'll, if you find a good opportunity, definitely backstab your, uh, your neighbors later. But just don't do it early on because you don't want to get into that arms race where you're all feeling like you have to build these military structures to just, when you're competing over just a few points, it's just really not worth it at all. Um, one possible strategy you could use, you can throw it in there, give it a try, um, if, if maybe you just get a ton of military cards early on. Uh, but you can build a bunch of military structures right away just to discourage your neighbors from even bothering with it. So if you just build a few early on, then your neighbors might just give up and be like, yeah, whatever. So then you're still gonna get your points. You can maybe even grab all 18 of those possible military points. Um, without only building a few structures early on, and you, then you can concentrate on your other strategy later. Um, it's also a way to kind of delay that decision of, of whether you, of, of which strategy you want to go after um, if you build military right away, because it's not really, it's, it's fairly strategy independent. So um, that's another thing you can possibly do. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it for military. Wonders. Uh, these give each player some unique goals to kind of go after because usually the stages of your wonder have a pretty good reward, but they often require a lot of resources, um, even up to even up to like four four resources, like you know four clay just to build one of the stages of the wonder. So it can be it can be um, a little daunting to to try to gather those up, and it can really screw up your original strategy. Um, because those resources might not really benefit you in your primary strategy. Um, so one important tip is that if you can, you know from the beginning of the game which wonder you're going after and which resources are gonna be required for each of the stages. So if you can pick a strategy, I mean it also depends on what your neighbors are doing, what other opponents are doing, which cards you get, but definitely seriously take into account which resources you need because if you can overlap your resources needs between wonder stages and the strategy that you go for, um, it can really, really help you out. So like if you have a wonder that requires a bunch of like ore and stone and clay, um, a science strategy will not allow you to overlap on those resources. So it's gonna be very expensive. You're gonna have to spend a bunch of, uh, of your plays building resource cards for, for all of the gray stuff that you're gonna need more for science and then all of this like brown, these brown resources that you're gonna need for your, um, your wonder. So, it's not advisable at all. You're gonna waste a too, way too many plays on resources. So um, if you do have a, a wonder like that, then stay away from the science strategy and go for, for more, focus more on like a community strategy and probably some, uh, some military too. So yeah, that is one good tip. Um, also, when you do start the game, like I said, you know which resources you're gonna need yet you don't necessarily know which strategy you're going to go for. So if you are looking at your, your first few hands in Act 1, you can grab resources that will help with your wonder 
just so that because you know you're gonna need those anyway, but you don't know necessarily which strategy you're gonna go for. So um, yeah, play resources for your wonder, and that will delay um, the your decision as to which strategy to go for, which is which is important too. So you can get a, a better feel for what your opponents are playing, which resources that they're playing, and which structures they're playing that will give you an idea of the strategy that they're gonna go for. Because you don't want to uh, have too many people going for the same strategy. Because um, yeah, limited number of each of the cards that are required for each strategy. So, um, I am going to go through each of the um, stages, um, stages of the different uh, wonders that are possible. Um, and I guess I will go just in alphabetical order. So we'll start with Alexandria. This one just gives you some extra raw materials to use. Uh, so it's um, it's not very flashy. Um, it's honestly not one of my favorite wonders. And um, it will, it's pretty flexible. I mean, you can use these in, in most of the strategies and for most of the structures that you're gonna be building throughout the game. But um, yeah, it's just, you, there are better wonders out there. Um, the, the, the key thing is that it just allows you to skip playing some of the resource cards that you might otherwise play. Um, and so you can focus on playing some, some actual direct point giving uh, structures. That's about it for Alexandria. Babylon is a, it's a pretty interesting one. Uh, when you take a look at it, both side A and side B allow you to use any one symbol for the science strategy. Um, so it uh, makes you really want to go for that one. I mean, that's incredibly powerful to help you complete those sets in the science strategy. Um, the, the problem with it is that the wonder stages require clay and lumber, a bunch of clay and lumber that you normally wouldn't want to worry about if you're going for the science strategy. So you're not able to overlap on those resources um, like you'd like to normally. Um, and also the stage two on site B, which allows you to play an extra card uh, in each age, uh, makes you want to you hurry up and grab that, uh, build those stage one and stage two of it in age one so that you can use it in age one, age two, and age three. Uh, so it makes you really want to do that. But again, then you have to spend a bunch of your plays early on building resources. So it's really contradictory to the science strategy in some ways. Um, so, but when I get this, I do go science if it, at all possible. You know, of course, if I see a bunch of science cards being played by my, my opponents, I'll probably back out. Um, and in that case, if I have Babylon and I do not go science, then I will just not worry about really building the stages of the wonder at all. Um, just because they, they won't really help you uh, very much unless, um, unless you're going science. So um, kind of an issue, this is a, it's definitely a decent, decent wonder to get. Um, but yeah, those are just some things to keep in mind. Ephesos is, um, is one that will just give you a bunch of coins uh, throughout the game, which is good, money's good. Um, it'll allow you to buy resources from your opponents, so you can you can worry you can spend less of your plays building your own resources and just buying from your opponents. Uh, but of course, you know when you're giving two coins uh, to your opponents every time you use the resources, you know that's two thirds of a victory point and can really add up throughout the game if you're just giving your opponents money. But still, I mean it keeps you pretty flexible to be able to use those uh, other resources. And um, if nothing else, you can save save your money and and just get your uh, spend them on on victory points at the end of the game too. So, um, eh, I don't know. It's not my favorite one to get, uh, but uh, this wonder can be can be okay. You can really just go for any strategy you want. Giza is probably my favorite wonder. I like it a lot. It's just uh, uh, straight up victory points. Um, it's another good one for a new player because it's pretty simple, um, but it's also fairly flexible because, um, you know, victory points are great in any strategy. Um, it works better with the community one because of the resources that you need for it. Uh, but still, it's um, yeah, overall just um, a bunch of points. It, um, on the B side, you can use um, you have four stages of it, you know, which requires four plays. But um, each one gives you victory points, and uh, you can also grab some of those Act Three cards that will give you victory points for having stages of your wonder. So I, I really like this one a lot. It's um, it's good. There isn't a whole lot else to to say about it. Halicarnassos, this one uh, requires the most um, attention and the um, kind of micromanaging almost. You should, it's really important when you play uh, the stages where you get to look through the discard pile 
and find any card and play it for free. It's super, super good. This wonder is really, really good. So in all of the uh, side B stages, you get to do this. And then in stage two of the side A, you get to do it. Um, you just got to do it at the right time. So um, you want to play this in later. Uh, I recommend in the later ages. Um, you, because uh, as soon as you build this, that's when you get to look through the discard pile. So you want to do it at least later in the age, because at that point, um, you often have a, a, a hand where you're only looking through a couple a couple cards, and you just there's nothing that's really amazing for you to play. So it's a good time to do to to use this ability. Um, it, also, if you wait later in in age, you have the most cards of that age to choose from, which are probably more powerful. You know, for something like science strategy, it doesn't really matter. Um, but then you also have just more cards in general to choose from in that discard pile, which is important. So you can get the one that will help your strategy the most. So um, it's pretty sweet for a science strategy too, because um, you can some if you don't have a science card that you can uh, you have to choose from, um, play this. Hopefully someone has discarded one to get it hopefully out of the game. But um, you can just grab it and play it for free, and um, it's uh, it's almost like getting an extra hand to look through whenever you want. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty sweet. This is uh, also one of my favorite uh, favorite wonders to get. Olympia is a is a another kind of weird one, um, uh, one that isn't really my favorite. It feels like it's a um, just like a miscellaneous bag where they had some stuff they wanted to put on a wonder and they didn't know where to put it, so they put it here. Um, so like uh, side A, uh, you can build on the second stage. You can um, play a a structure for free every age. So that's one. If you play on that side, you want to grab. Uh, grab that second stage, uh, build it as quickly as possible so you can hopefully activate it in age one um, and then also in age two and age three. So uh, that's interesting on stage B uh, or side B. Um, you can uh, play resources uh, for one cheaper from your neighbors. Um, your Play your neighbor's resources for one cheaper, which is nice, and you can you'll use that. You'll take advantage of that quite a bit throughout the game. Uh, that's actually the most. It's weird that that's probably the most valuable stage in the wonder, um, in my opinion. Um, and then in on, on the stage three, uh, you can copy a guild of a neighbor, which is just like a crap a crapshoot. You don't really. It's hard to plan based on actions you can't control. You don't know what your opponents are going to play. You don't know what the strategies that they're going to use. Um, so. Um, this becomes more valuable if you realize that they're playing a strategy, um, your neighbors are playing strategies where a, a, a guild will be very critical to you um, to get, like you'll be able to cash in a lot of points because then if you play that guild or one of your neighbors plays it, then you get the benefit of that guild. But still, it's, it's just too, uh, I, you can't play it around it, it's just, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like it, um, it's just too big a risk. But, um, it's good to have the resources necessary for that third stage uh, available so that if you find that somebody does play a really sweet guild, you can, um, you can build that final stage and, and um, pull the trigger. Rodos is uh, the military wonder. Um, it, uh, some of the stages will give you a bonus in the military arena. And uh, it's kind of cool because it doesn't feel as aggressive as like actually playing a military structure. Um, so when it comes to the end of an age and you decide to try and figure out who's going to win the battles, um, you might win, you know, even if you're by not playing any military structure. So um, like, well, I guess I, I win the battle, you know, just for my wonder. You know, I didn't actually try to attack you guys. It's, I'm just trying to build my wonder here, you know, so it just doesn't feel as aggressive, which is kind of cool. Um, kind of fly under the radar and still grab some of those military points. Um, but again, you can't win a game just based on military points, so just use it. You know, just don't go crazy military focused. Um, you know, just still still use military only when necessary. You know, you might not build any military cards with this um, uh, with this wonder at all. Um, and on side B, you only have two wonder stages, which is kind of good and bad. Um, so you know, your neighbors can't get. Um, we'll lose some points on those uh, like Act 3 cards that will give you um, victory points based on the number of wonder stages that, you're, that their neighbors have built. Um, but you can't really take advantage of the one that will give you points for the, 
the no, uh, the wonder stages that you built. So, um, yeah, good and bad. That doesn't it, it's pretty much a wash. Um, so yeah, that's Brotos. So now I'm going to cover some general tips um, that are fairly independent of any strategy that you choose. Um, and we'll just give you a little bit of an edge uh, if you keep them in mind when you're playing this game. Um, the first one uh, I'll talk about is just how critical it is to know what your neighbors are, are doing. Which resources they require, which strategies they're going for, which cards they really need. Because um, like in, in age one and three, you're passing your hand to the player on your left and at age two, play, passing it to the player on your right. So you have um, a lot of control over which cards they have available to them. So if you, um, if you know you have like a science player playing to your left, you're passing to your left, um, if you just like discard that science card, even if you're not playing, so if you're not playing science, discard it for three coins or um, use it as to build one of your wonder stages um, so that to deprive them of any science cards at all, uh, that's gonna be really awesome. Or if you have you know two or three science cards in the hand, then that doesn't really matter because even if you discard one of those science cards, they're still gonna have you know one or two other ones to choose from. So that's important. Also, like resources that they need. Um, so if they are relying, if if you can like prevent them from getting like a loom, and they really need a loom throughout the game, or, or maybe for like a stage of their wonder, you can prevent them from like being ever being able to build like stage two of their wonder. That is gonna probably kill them, depending on the wonder that they're building. But that's something that that can be very, very, very effective if you can screw some more of it that way. Um, also, the number of players has uh, a big um, impact on which cards are going to be in in the deck that you're playing with. So, um, if you want to refer back to the tables that I showed you, um, you can check those out on my blog, ForbiddenLim.com. Check out the um, text and image version of this analysis so that you can get a copy of those tables. I'll even provide the um, Excel uh, workbook that I created. Um, for each of these uh, uh, strategies, each of the tables. Uh, so you can take a look at those and play, play with those around and check out some of the, um, the statistics uh, for uh, probability of getting each of those and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, keep, a, keep in mind how many of each uh, structure is gonna, are going to be available to you uh, depending on the number of players. Um, in a smaller player game, there, for instance, like the science strategy is a, is a tough one in a small player game because you, if someone were to like discard one of your science structures, um, you're prop it's really, really, really going to hurt you because the science structure relies on, on really getting every single one of the critical science cards to be most effective. So if somebody starts, if, if people team up on you to start discarding those science cards, you're screwed. You're just completely screwed. So science uh, strategy is not as good uh, in a smaller player game. But the military, splashing in some military, is actually better in a smaller player game because by winning battles with your neighbors, you're winning the battles against a larger percentage of your opponent. So um, sending over a negative one victory point for winning the battle um, to like two of your opponents in like a four player game, that's two thirds of your opponents that you're, you're hurting. You're preventing them from getting points and you're giving them negative points. So uh, yeah, military is even better um, in, a, in a smaller player game. Um, and then when you're choosing between the cards in your hand, um, if you have, if you're looking at your first set of uh, cards, your first set of seven, seven cards in an age, um, you're looking at those, if you're in a smaller player game, you can pick one knowing that uh, half of these are going to get back around to you, uh, you will be able to choose from them again later on in the age. But if you're playing in like a seven player game, this is your one chance to get the card you want. You're looking at your, the cards you have available, if you can't play it now, uh, you're, it's not going to come back around to you uh, in this age, so you're not going to get to play that one. So, uh, yeah, that is also important, the number of players. And um, that's about it for general tips. So, um, yeah, in conclusion, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's really tough for a new player to get into this game. There's a lot going on, tons of decisions that you have to make about um, which, which cards to pick, strategies to use, and you're going to have no idea. You're going to be completely lost. So um, it's a tough one uh, for a new player. So if you're playing with a new player, um, just give them some tips. Um, have them go for, you know, like the, the community strategy. Just have them pick blue cards. Uh, let them, you know, tell them to get a bunch of uh, resources just so uh, they're, not, they're not having to kind of micromanage their resources too much. And um, 
after a few games, they'll be able to compete with uh, with any of the veterans after they get an idea of the strategies that are out there, the cards that are really good, and the ones that um, are not as important. So, um, yeah, that's... But it, on the other side of the coin, this game has a lot of replay value, even for really hardcore gamers, because there are so many things to keep in mind. It will really challenge your, your, your brain uh, constantly throughout this game to make the right decisions. Uh, uh, because, yeah, there are so many of these decisions to make that are going to be really critical, like early on in age to the end of the age, or early on in the game to the end of the game. So that makes it really cool and, and, um, and really makes this game a, a keystone um, in, a, in a game collection for, for any tabletop gamer. So again, yeah, definitely a fun game, and I hope this helped you. Um, check out more of my videos, uh, comment, put comments if you want me to uh, go over one, one game in particular that uh, you could use um, some strategic analysis on. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, until next time.